Yeah, good evening once more. We are starting tonight's um, live session with uh, project management methodologies. I hope, I hope you can hear me very well. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, project management methodologies. Yeah, uh, project management uh, methodology refers to method used to manage a project from beginning to the end. It ensures project output are realized within the given timeline and budget. And we have so many of them, have so many methods of uh, managing a uh, project. So, well, it depends if you're managing a project. First, you need to understand the methodology your organization is using. So you can't impose your own methodology on the organization. Even if um, what they are using is not um, the best approach in the market, you have to uh, follow your organizational method. You can only suggest for them to choose your method, but uh, with all the methodologies in the market, uh, the most acceptable method of a managing project these days is agile methodology. So is uh, if you're looking at the, the, the job market, mainly they will be asking of um, agile project manager, and you're looking at um, scrum masters and the rest of them. These are within agile environment. It's become so popular that most organizations have started using agile. And yeah, so many. So many that are not using Agile these days are in the transition stage. Or even if they are using all that method, they must have a, a combination of Agile. So Agile has become so prominent in the market. So that's why um, among all the methodologies, we are going to be concentrating more on Agile. Because even during our internship, we are going to be using Agile to deliver our project. But it's good to have knowledge of other methodologies because some companies um, are quite resistant to change. So some, so some company decide to stick to their old fashion. If you, if you get a job, in such areas, so and you have um, knowledge of other methodology that will help you a lot. So we have a waterfall, we have Prince 2, we have a lean, we have Six Sigma, and we have um, Wajai. Wajai is uh, a combination of um, waterfall and agile. You know, some people say that Agile is a bit loose because of um, its approach. And some people say that Waterfall is too rigid because of the way it's highly structured. So those using Agile and, uh, tend to bring the best of Agile and the best of Waterfall, you know, which is very good. I've tried it and it's very good because it makes what agile methodology helps you to initiate your project properly and then continue with the agile using their flexible um, approach to deliver a project. The first one we are going to look at here is um, Prince 2. Prince 2 methodology uh, is um, developed, is mainly accepted uh, uh, way of project management in UK. It's developed in UK 
adopted by UK government as uh, the uh, project management methodology. It was popular, but it's no longer pop popular the way it used to be. So Agile is actually taking over every everywhere. Some people are still using it, but they, they now because of the popularity of Agile, they are now trying to restructure Prince to, to have part of them being Agile in nature. So Prince 2 emphasizing on dividing projects into manageable and their controller uh, controllable stages. The biggest advantage of uh, using Prince 2 is its flexibility. As a generic methodology, Prince 2 can apply to any project, regardless of size, scale, location, industry, or sector. So, Prince used to be very, very, um, very, very popular. Actually, the first project management uh, methodology I dived into those days is Prince 2 when I tried to get a Prince 2 certification. But I did these days, company doesn't don't, um, ask for Prince 2 any longer. The most companies are looking for agile project manager or agile business analysts, you know. So that's why everybody is now trying to to be more agile in project management, right? getting a, a certification in agile like a school master and the rest of them. But Prince 2 is still very good. So Prince 2 can be applied to any projects, regardless of its size, scale, location, and industry. And it has seven principles. Uh, the, the, the principles are Continue, continued project, uh, business justification. Uh, the business case is the most important document and to ensure that the project is still viable. So what this means is that they are, uh, Prince 2 focuses on making sure that the project we are managing is still very viable, looking at the cost and the benefits the cost of the project and the benefits you realize from the benefit uh, from the the project that's one major thing prince two uh, focuses making sure that the projects uh, you are managing we we uh, the, the, we give the uh, the desired benefit of that project at the end of that project once the project is beginning to deviate from the benefits, then Prince 2 will make you to think that you are losing focus and um, you try to re-strategize on your project approach. So it's more about, it's more about um, realizing the cost of your project, the full benefits of the project. So that's why the major thing uh, Prince 2 helps you to, to focus this on. Then the next thing is learning from experience. Prince 2 makes sure that uh, uh, there is a comprehensive lesson. Uh, please, uh, this uh, noise is too much. Uh, Prince 2 uh, focuses so much on lesson learned reports. You know, whenever you are, you are, you are managing a project using Prince 2, uh, you, you have to document every aspect of your project as a lesson, as a lesson learned uh, log so that other people managing similar projects can learn from the lesson of um, the project you've managed. So, is, it becomes a reference point. This is one of the, another benefits and the principle of a Prince 2. You must document your lesson learned very well. In Prince 2, you have to define roles and responsibilities very well. Roles are, and, uh, are separated from individual. 
unlike some other uh, project management uh, where maybe during a racing metrics you can use name, but here rules in principle is very very is a principle. You don't call somebody by name in Prince too. It's by the rule. If it's a, it's a, it's a business analyst, address the person as a business analyst. Is a, um, uh, a developer, you address the person as a developer. Is a core principle uh, in Prince too. Prince two manages uh, projects uh, by stages. So in Prince two, it's very very important. Uh, you do your thorough work breakdown structure. You break everything into stages and then manage manage um, all these stages and control them very well. That is one other uh, good principle of Prince two. And um, work breakdown structure is very uh, is a very good project management techniques, which. Uh, we, we've done our we've treated work breakdown structure. Prince to dwell so much on that. Another one is uh, uh, managed by exception. A Prince two project has defined tolerance for each project objective to establish limit of a delegated authority. In Prince two, there are the certain things. A project manager uh, don't need to delegate so many some authorities in Prince too. Some um, delegated uh, authority must be defined in Prince too. So it's not everything as a project manager you delegate maybe to your team members to do like uh, during um, red log you can delegate somebody you feel uh, he has the best knowledge on that particular area of uh, risk management. To, to manage the risk. In principle, whatever a delegated authority uh, you must assign must be defined and um, validated. Prince two focus on products. A, pro, a Prince two pro project focus on definition and delivery of the product. In particular, the quality requirement. The quality requirement of the product uh, that uh, you manage uh, within the project must be clearly defined. The standard must be um, clearly defined. The, quality, the standard of the quality through the requirement gathering and the requirement validation and prioritization, it must have an accepted um, criteria for quality. So that's one other. Uh, good principles of a uh, Prince Two. Another one is that Prince Two, you tailor your projects within a project environment. Environments can be um, environment that that that, that is, um, favors the, the 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 project, the size of the. Uh, the project, the complexity of the project, the importance of the project, the time, capacity, and risk. So all these are uh, environments within the project that must be defined in Prince Two. So the, if, if it's a complex project, must the, the complexity must be defined. If the size of the project must be defined, like. The, 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 the size being defined like looking at the, the size of personnel or the size of the project team. In Prince 2, it must be defined. Time capacity must be defined in Prince 2. There must be acceptable, acceptable time limit from the a project must have a time limit, which is uh, an accepted uh, generally standard in project management. These are most of the principle that Prince to uh, look as a core principle in project management. Other things can come, but it must be um, settling a lot around this uh, <coughs> core major seven principles. 
that's um, a Prince too. So looking at this diagram, you can see the business case, uh, the organization, quality, plan, risk, change, and progress. These are how Prince two is structured in uh, managing their projects uh, within their own project life cycle. You must start from the business case. Business case defines the, the reason for the project. Then the organization type of organization, the, the industry, the organization belongs. Then the quality, which is the quality I mean here, I mean the quality of the project. It must be viable at all times that um, it must justify the cost of that project. Once the project start losing value and the cost is no longer um, justified, then there is a problem. You must have a thorough planning. Risk must be managed very well. Any changes must be managed very well within a uh, change management approach. And it's a continuous pro uh, uh, process. Make sure that the, 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 pro the, the project keeps progressing as planned using um, a good uh, work breakdown structure. So that is how you manage a, a project within Prince 2. So actually, I've not managed the project within Prince 2. Most of the project I've managed is within Agile methodology. So, but yeah, it's very good to understand Prince 2 as well because you don't know where you are going to get a job. The next approach is a waterfall. Waterfall has been the oldest way of uh, managing projects. And because of that, we call it traditional method. Once you hear traditional method of project management, we are talking about a waterfall. Waterfall is a sequential development process that flows like a waterfall through all phases of projects from requirements, design, development, and testing with each phase completely closed before the next uh, phase can begin. So waterfall is highly structured, is so rigid. You, cannot, you can't start the project until the the whole process is highly uh, planned and documented before you can start the project. And when you start the project, you cannot change anything within that project, within the phase. So it becomes so rigid. And um, because of the rigid nature, that's why so many organizations don't want it again, because the project, uh, so many organizations believe that there should be flexibility because we are in a market where technology is changing rapidly. So we shouldn't be in a, a very rigid environment. So, but like waterfall, they are still using waterfall, but mainly like in construction industries. But like in, in, in software development, it is very rare seeing people using waterfall because software industry is, is fast. It's very, very, uh, the, 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 the changes in software development is very fast. So that's why uh, waterfall is now losing its um, popularity in IT industry. But they are still using it in companies like I see in, in industries like construction, like um, real estate and the rest of them, where you need a, a rigid, a thorough documentation. Waterfall comes with its own benefits, although it's losing popularity, but got its own benefit. In waterfall, developers can identify design 
errors during the analysis and the design stage, helping them to avoid writing faulty code during the implementation phase. These are some of the um, advantages of using it. The total cost and timeline of the project can be accurately um, uh, defined during the, the planning because uh, you, you know you plan the, the 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 project very well you plan all the project stages before you start so because of that before you start implementation you know the the time period is going to take you to finish a project with the structured approach it is easier to measure progress according to clearly defined milestone. So from the beginning, the time you are gathering your requirement, initiating to the, the last stage, you know all your milestones is clearly defined. That is how uh, Waterfall is. Developers who join the project in the process can easily get up uh, to speed because every thing they need to know should be in the requirement documentation. So even if you are joining today, all you need to know is to get the, the documentation of the, the project and you know where they are and it will be easy for you to join. Customers aren't always adding new requirements to the project. So this makes the delaying of the, the, the production, um, it removes all the delay and uh, the, the issue of uh, uh, scope creep doesn't apply because it's very difficult in, um, in waterfall to add changes. But it comes with its own uh, disadvantages. Projects can take longer to deliver than uh, with an iterative one, such as agile methodology. Because of the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the structured nature, everything must be completed before a project can be, or a software can be deployed. So if you are, for instance, developing a, a software with so many functionalities. If you are developing a software with 10 functionalities, all the 10 functionalities must be working, must be thoroughly tested and working before that software can be deployed. But in Agile, if you are developing, if you want to develop 10 software, um, a software with 10 functionalities, 10 features, you can actually start your software with one feature. Once one feature is working, you can deploy the, the software for use. And then you keep on developing other features and then bringing them to the market one after the other till you finish deploying the, the 10 features of the, the software. But in waterfall, it doesn't apply. Everything must be ready before you can use it. And just like I say, when we are starting, there are so many company, companies are dumping waterfall because of this rigid nature. This um, waterfall approach has been the approach Nokia technology has been using in uh, developing all their uh, mobile phones over the time. And uh, when Apple came in, Apple adopted the agile approach where they deploy a um, little amount of um, fun functionalities in their, in their own uh, mobile phone and move it to the market. And they'll continue to update with new, new features. And over time, that's how Apple took over the market. You know, in a situation where Nokia is trying to develop the whole features. Nokia, um, Apple have deployed their product with two features and then bringing out 
different version of their, their products. And that's how they, they, they capture the market. And that's how they phased Nokia out of the market. Nokia started struggling. And because of this, so many companies feel that this is the best approach, mainly companies dealing with softwares like uh, Facebook and the rest of them. When Facebook started, Facebook was so sketchy in terms of their features. But over time, Facebook uh, you know, got so many features. And what they used to achieve this is using agile methodology. So these are some of the advantages we have uh, we have in a waterfall approach. There is no room for requests for change and review um, and add new features later in the process. So, which is not good because uh, in a situation we are developing a, uh, a software and that's a piece of software you are developing becomes obsolete. There is need to, to review or make changes. But you, when you are using waterfall, such room doesn't apply. You must have to go through difficult processes in order to make changes in a waterfall approach. And in waterfall, you must close a particular stage before you start another stage. And that makes the, the, the process very lengthy. Unlike in agile methodology, where you can actually have like different developers working on different uh, individual features. For instance, um, if, if you are uh, uh, Facebook, using Facebook as an example, if you are working on group, um, group management uh, management system, event management system. Um, well, let me say another um, marketplace management system. These are three systems. And these three systems, these three features in Facebook, three of them are independent systems. So in Facebook, in, in using um, agile approach, you can actually start these three uh, features at the same time using different project team or developers to do that. And you can deploy all of them at the, at the same time. But in a in, um, waterfall approach, you must finish one before you start another one. You must finish one feature, test it, then you start another one. That's how um, waterfall uh, works and these are the reason why it becomes so unpopular, it becomes so rigid, and companies are no longer using it the way um, it used to be. So that's why they are losing their popularity in the market. So I've used the um, waterfall before, and I've, con I've used the combination of waterfall and the um, agile methodology, but the truth is that agile remains the best. It remains the best because agile tend to focus on customers, what customers need, and then making sure that the, the software is working very well. But waterfall tend to focus on high level documentation, you know, High level documentation, no matter how beautiful your documentation is, and your software is not working the way it's supposed to work, it doesn't make any sense in the uh, software industry. They don't care about so the documentation. What they care about is the software working. And this is what the agile approach is giving to the industry. Companies are still using waterfall, though it's still not um, it's losing uh, its popularity, but so many companies are using, and so many are now working hard to transit from a uh, waterfall approach to agile approach.
The next approach we are looking is uh, lean. Lean methodology is um, is very popular mainly within the manufacturing industries. That's where they use lean approach so much. Why is it in, uh, um, so popular within the the manufacturing industry? Because is a project management approach that helps the the organization to 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 save waste, um, uh, reduce waste in their uh, work stream. Lean is a strategy for achieving significant improvement in performance through the continuous elimination of all wasteful resources. That is where Lean comes in. So if you're looking at um, manufacturing industries where there is a lot of um, wastages, even in, in, in service industries, they tend, they tend to bring in lead to waste to save because to, to increase uh, profitability and revenue is not all about um, increasing their uh, sales. You can achieve that through reducing waste of uh, wa reducing waste during production or during operation, and this is where lean comes in. And to do that, you need to map out the value stream. We need to map out the way a process is being done. And during the pro when you map out the, the process, you identify the waste within the process then you eliminate the waste and then you deploy um, the current process, which is now optimized. And that current process that has been optimized now will be highly um, lean. And that's how so many organizations have been using it. For instance, I'll give you a scenario where they are using um, lean so much uh, these days. If you look at the um, hotel industries, for instance, within their restaurants, when you get there and uh, you are ordering for a food, actually the food you order is not processed. It's when you order for food, that's when they start processing the food. And then that's why so many times you order for food, they will tell you that it's going to take 30 minutes for your food to be ready. This is because they don't want to prepare food because you know food after one day, the food will lose its taste. And so many people will not like it. So this is where a lean approach comes in. So with that, you find out that so many um, customers will be happy because you serve them fresh food. Customers are, are even pay higher because you serve them fresh food. But the main, um, the main uh, ideology behind that is because hotels don't want to, to, to waste resources. Many times they cook um, all their foods and they uh, kept it waiting for customers. What if customers don't come? All the food they, pro they process will be wasteful. And so many times they'll start throwing the food away. But with lean approach, it's only what is ordered that is what is delivered. That is what even so many, like in, um, if you're ordering a furniture, so many companies these days, if you want to buy a furniture, you order for the furniture, they will tell you say, you take this amount of time before your furniture can be delivered. If you order for a clothes, they will tell you still so many a time before your clothes. So they don't really process it. It's when your order arrives, and then they process your order. And then that will save them waste. There will be no room that uh, so 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 uh, goose has been in stock for so long and nobody is buying it. 
and we'll, so this is how to reduce waste using lean approach. So lean is all about reducing waste. So that's how you use uh, the most environment they use it is in production or manufacturing industries. And it's still very, 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 very popular within the industry. So if you have um, experience in lane, yeah, there are so many jobs in lane and you can actually lean this lane through, um, most of the time the, it's been done when you are learning um, a Six Sigma like black belt or uh, certification, green belt certification in Six Sigma. So they combine lean and Six Sigma a lot because Six Sigma is uh, about uh, uh, process improvement, while lean is about um, waste reduction. When you are reducing the waste in the process, you are equally improving the, the process. So, so that's why two of them tend to go together all the time. So lean is very, very powerful. And if you are if you have good knowledge of uh, lean project management, so many companies will be looking for you like uh, uh, as a process analyst. Uh, so many business analysts tend to, to learn more about lean in order to become a process analyst. And they pay them very high as a process analyst. Next. Uh, project management approach we are looking at uh, is um, Six Sigma. Uh, Six Sigma is very, very uh, popular in the industry. And this mainly within senior project uh, managers and senior business analysts. So Six Sigma aims to improve process processes, reduce waste and errors, and increase customer satisfaction throughout an organization. So it's, it's mainly used for continuous improvement. It's very, very popular and very, very, um, uh, it's very, very good, pro good uh, um, project management methodology. Six Sigma is based on a DMIC uh, project uh, methodology. DMIC means, uh, D for DMIC means define, and M means for measure, and uh, A means for analyze, and I means for improve, and C means for control. So this is how to use Six Sigma in uh, project management. So you define the system, the voice of the customer, and their requirements and their goal. So you must understand the voice of the customer and their requirements and the project goal. How do you understand the cost of the customers? You capture their through requirement gathering, understand what the customers want, and then you gather the requirements. After gathering the requirement, then you measure the key aspects of the current process. Calculate the uh, assist, proce uh, assist process capability. So there, after uh, gathering the requirement, you look at the assist, document the assist, just like as our traditional way of uh, business analysis. You document the assist, then you analyze the the assist. Assist here means as it is. It means current process. So when you say assist, assist is the same thing. Assist is just a jargon as in, in business analysis. So assist means current process, the way they are doing things. So in, in the six sigma, you de define the, the, the process that is what is the, 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 the problem 
you define the problem, then you gather requirements, which is measuring the requirements. Then you analyze the requirements. That is data analysis to investigate the cause of the problem. During, during, during the time you are doing the investigation, you look at the cause and the effects. You are going, these are some of the uh, approaches we are going to look into in business analysis. When you are doing business analysis, you need to look at the, the cause and effects. Uh, cause of a problem and the effect of a problem using a fishbone analysis. That's how to do a cause, and, uh, a cause and effect analysis. And after then, this will help you to look out for the root cause of the problem. This is equally where you do your root cause analysis to understand the defect within the, the process. And then when you uh, find out the defect, the next thing is to then improve on the process. Um, improving on the process, it means developing a new process that is better than the developing a new process that is better than the old process. So that is transiting from a C to, to B. And after that, then you control the process. So, um, after improving, optimizing the process, the next stage in C Sigma in C Sigma is to control the future uh, state. Although you have improved on the system. But you need to continuously improve on the system. That's what that's here, what we call control. Making sure that uh, there is no deviation. If there is any deviation over the time, keep correcting it and improving on it. So it's a continuous process. So that's how to use a Six Sigma in managing pro, uh, projects. You use it in a, in a way where there is continuous improvement. And what is important is that all the organizations, so many, every organization is looking at added value, looking at continuous adding value to their services, adding value to, to their products and everything they do. And that's why Six Sigma has become very, very important and very, very popular. Six Sigma can be used with Lean. Six Sigma can be used with, um, with uh, Agile approach. So it's not um, a standalone uh, project um, uh, management uh, methodology. It can be used with other project management methodology. It can be used to plan, and then, then you can use the uh, Agile methodology in uh, execution or deployment. So that's how Six Sigma works. Uh, Six Sigma is a very deep um, project management methodology if you want to dive into it because have four stages of uh, certification from uh, white belt to yellow belt to green belt to black belt. And that takes a lot of time to, to, to do that. Because uh, within all this um, certification level, you go deeper and deeper, trying to understand um, how C Sigma works. But everything revolves around this DMIC approach. But like I said, uh, we're not going if we, we're not going into details in most of all these um, approaches except um, agile approach which is the most popular and the one we're going to use um, during our work experience 
but it's very good you understand um, all these uh, other approaches. When you have become an, um, a project manager or a business analyst, you might decide to have a, a C Sigma belt, maybe white belt, yellow belt, green belt, or even black belt. But that's going to be, once you have a, a, a black belt in Six Sigma, then you become um, a high level project manager or a high level business analyst. With a black belt, you don't look for a job. Jobs look for you. But it takes time to acquire such a um, certification and the level of knowledge because before, but to have all this, you must have a lot of practical knowledge where you must have de delivered projects using this approach. Any questions so far before we go into agile methodology? And the next thing we need to look into now is uh, agile, agile methodology, which is uh, the most important and most popular, let me say most, not so most, but most popular in the industry for now, based on, not, not based on my preference, but based on statistics. The Agile methodology manages a project by breaking it up into several phases. It involves constant collaboration with stakeholders and continuous improvement at every stage. The project. Oh, sorry, good evening. Sorry, sorry okay. my hand is raised. Okay. Okay, good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Okay, sorry to take us back a little bit. Um, you actually spoke a little more extensively on uh, the six uh, sigma. Okay. And um, I think part of what I can take from here is that it's, it's quite uh, versatile. Yes. Uh, but I will also want to know, like in its application, like uh, I know for Lean, you mentioned um, where uh, industries that have preference for this. So yeah. for this Six Sigma, uh, which industries really um, are more particular about this uh, type of uh, project methodology? Yeah, yeah. Six Sigma doesn't have uh, any particular industry that is, uh, like I said in Lane, it's mainly in manufacturing industry. But Six Sigma, it doesn't have, uh, because why Six Sigma is not uh, uh, tied down to any particular industry because it focuses on process improvement. It can be the way the organization process is being done, improving on that. Like now you are a banker, Six Sigma is very, very important in banking. Six Sigma is very important in um, uh, healthcare. For instance, in banking, there are so many things you guys do in banking that needs improvement, like um, process automation. You can automate so many ways you do your transaction, which is, uh, is going on these days, like artificial intelligence. These are Six Sigma approach. Automating the way customers um, make payments. These are these days, customers don't go to to the, the, the cashier to, to, to make payment any longer. They can actually make their payment through um, some ATM machine. These are Six Sigma approach, improving the way you do things. Now, like in customer support, those days, you, if you want to, to, to have, resolve an issue, you need to go to customer service to, to talk to customer, but these days, there are so many artificial intelligence uh, I, within the banking where you can uh, talk to 
a bot and bot will resolve your query without you meeting anybody, any person one on one. So you can see is 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 not tied down to any industry, and that's why it's very very um, is highly recognized and highly valued because it's not tied down to any industry. It's all about process improvement, even software improvement, product improvement. It's about improving the way you do things or you, the way your product is from one state to the other. And that's why you're looking at so many of these um, softwares. You see the software um, log, like the de development log. You see um, update one, update two, update. Keep on seeing the way they keep updating their processes. The way they are using to do all these things, I see Sigma. At times, they, they, they use the agile approach to, to gather requirement, see what customers need. But looking at it thoroughly, most of all these, even DevOps, DevOps approach, which is, um, uh, process improvement in a, in a software, they all come from Six Sigma. So that is why I say you cannot tie it to any industry because every industry, they tend want to improve on their processes. It's not only on software, it can be in service industry. So, um, any more questions? Hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Sir, I want to ask a question concerning the waterfall methodology, sir. Okay. Let's say a project has been done using this waterfall methodology and there is need for an upgrade. Is that there is, a way like okay. uh, another methodology can be used? Let's say, if, uh, um, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Let's say waterfall uh, methodology has been used for the particular uh, project and the project is done. Mm -hmm. And there, there is need for an upgrade. For the particular project that has been done. Yeah, if it's like, for instance, you finish that product, for instance, uh, the product is completed. Okay. Then, if you are, if you want to upgrade that product, this is going to be a fresh project okay. because the project you actually deploy the once you deploy a project. A product is a finish, is considered that the, the project is uh, closed. So if you are if you are starting another pro, pro um, maybe update to improve on that product, is you can use any other approach you want. Okay. If you tend you can continue to use another waterfall on that, but the issue is that the first product you've uh, you've completed the first product um, project you you use the waterfall to to deploy okay sir so but the 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 the, the issue with uh, waterfall is that once you have started a project with waterfall you complete that project using waterfall and within that time you are deploying the project is going to be difficult to make an update or to make changes within uh, that uh, product. For instance, you are, you, you are making it, you are producing something and all of a sudden you see that the market is changing, that the, the, the market demand for the product you are, you are working, working on is no longer uh, very high because of uh, one reason or the other. Some, uh, if you are using um, 
agile methodology. In a, in a situation like that, you can, you can even cancel the project. You can even stop the project. You can even make another. But in waterfall, it's going to be difficult because you need to, to pass through a lot of documentation to sign a lot of documents, approval, before any change can be made. So that's why they say, it is, it is a thorough documentation before you start. And before any change can take place, it must be a thorough documentation, which takes time. So because of the rigid nature, that's why so many organizations are running away from, from that. So it's better you look at your circumstances before you start a project and know which one that suits your need and then adopt that one. Because before you start a project, looking at a project charter, which we've uh, done earlier, if, when you are looking at project charter, there is area where you see select project approach. At that point, you, 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 you choose a project approach. And you have chosen to use waterfall. And you are using waterfall. And all of a sudden, you want to make changes. It's going to be difficult. So that's why it's very good to analyze the kind of problem you are trying to solve within that project. And then know which approach that suits um, what you are doing. If you are analyze your, 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 your problem very well, if it's something like um, process improvement, then you, you, you make sure you choose six, six, six sigma, or you can choose a combination of uh, approach. Well, but the main thing that at times it depends on your organization because so many organizations have a standard that this is what we want. But some we, we look at you as a professional to help them choose the best methodology within the, um, all the methodologies. So that is um, how it works. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So we are back to agile methodology. So agile involves constant collaboration with stakeholders and continuous improvement at every stage. Project team cycle through a process of planning, executing, and evaluating. Continuous collaboration is vital, both with the team members and the project stakeholders. So that's agile. Agile approach, they tend to uh, focus more on collaboration. That's one vital uh, value of uh, agile. Team collaborates a lot. Um, stakeholders and the team collaborates. Um, the product owner and the customers collaborate. It is through this collaboration that you find out what the customer wants, you keep on finding out what the stakeholders want. And when you collaborate, it will be very, very difficult that when you finish the, the deploying a, a product or, a, or finish a project, uh, is not going to meet the customers or the stakeholders' um, requirement. So that's why Agile believes that constant collaboration with individuals is one of the best way to manage a project. So that when you keep collaborating, if there is changes, you can quickly react to that changes. And Agile gives room for changes. That's why they say Agile is flexible approach and is meant for solving complex problem. If you are using Agile, so many products that doesn't have 
um, expected end is better to use um, agile approach. There are so many products that doesn't have expected end. For instance, a project like Metaverse, which um, um, Facebook is now developing. <clears throat> it's a very big project and it's very complex. Nobody knows the how the end is going to be, even the Facebook themselves, yeah, because it has no expected end. Even Facebook himself, as a product, we don't know the expected end. Because every day you wake up, you see another change. Every day you wake up, you see another change. They don't know. So they are depending on wherever the technology is taking us, we are following technology. And that's why they adopted Agile, which is very, very flexible. So that if technology stays this way, they can easily jump ship. They can jump from one technology or from one design to another design. So Agile Manifesto has four main values. The main values are individual, individuals and interaction over processes and tools. So Agile believes on individual and interaction than processes and tools. Processes like uh, high documentation and the rest of them, they, they believe that the best way to, to, to deliver a quality product or project is by constant individual collaboration and interaction. So you find out what people want. They believe in working software over comprehensive documentation. It's better that the software is working as the customers want it than that the software have, you have a high uh, level documentation. They don't want to, I just don't believe in so much, they believe in the software is giving the value the customer wants. Customer collaboration uh, over contract negotiation. You, it's better to collaborate with your customers very well and um, tend to understand what they want. That's why uh, so many companies do well. So many, the way they find out uh, or to collaborate with their customers is that they, they make avenue for customer review about their products or about their services. That's how you collaborate with your customers through their review. You understand what they want. Responding to changes over following a plan, like in, in waterfall. Waterfall, when you develop a plan, you follow your plan. This is a plan, that is waterfall. So you don't deviate from the plan. But in Agile, they believe in if there is changes, you respond immediately. You know, if the, the, the product you are developing is no longer viable, is or is becoming obsolete, just drop the project or close it to reduce um, to reduce loss. So that is um, Agile uh, in nature. So you reduce uh, you reduce uh, waste by closing um, an oscillate, os a, a, a product that becoming obsolete. You are developing an oscillate project. There's no need on embarking on that project any longer because it's not going to give you the maximum um, uh, utility or the maximum value or return. So in order to to stop that kind of risk or reduce loss is to close it at the project stage. Agile is based on Scrum framework, which is for developing, delivering, and sustaining a product in a complex environment. 
designed for team of 10 or few members. So in agile methodology, there is a framework called Scrum. And this Scrum framework is designed to manage complex projects. Complex project, projects that um, or, or, or situation that are very complex to, to handle. A, a project that we do not understand the end from the beginning. We don't know how the project is going to end, but we are developing the projects. Just like I said, most projects we are seeing these days, we don't know their, their end, what their end result is going to be, but we are using them, but we don't know what we say that this is the full project. This is the whole product, and this is how it's going to be. Because we continue to, to have improvement. That is the way software industry is. Software is a complex project, very, very complex, because you don't know what will come up with the, the next feature of it of, is a, it's very, very complex with the kind of technologies we have these days, looking at um, um, artificial intelligence. We don't know what artificial intelligence will come up with next time. We are looking at um, machine learning. We don't know there is a lot you can achieve with machine learning because you can see most of the developers or the researchers, most of them are in the lab testing what can come up when you mix this and this. Something. So they don't know what is actually going to come up. So that's why some of them are termed as complex environments or complex projects. So the best way to manage such project is using a Scrum framework, which is uh, the main heart of agile methodology. And Scrum framework is designed to be, uh, it's not meant to be a, a large number of team members. The highest you can have of Scrum team is 10. They can be more than 10. Scrum 10 design it as mean that more than 10 is, is, is a noisy team. And when the team become noisy, it becomes so distraction. A lot of distraction will be coming in and they'll become less productive. So Scrum designed his team to be very, very small and very, very powerful. So that's how, so if the team becomes more than 10, then it can be called, it's no longer Scrum. That's how Scrum is being, um, define uh, looking at the, the Scrum guide. Scrum team consists of a product owner, a Scrum master, and developers. The team is self-organizing, cross-functional, and focuses on one objective at a time, which is the product goal. So this team of Scrum is made up of the Scrum master, the product owner, and then the rest will become developers. That's how it's designed. A developer can equally be a Scrum master. So, but to be effective Scrum, they cannot be more than 10 in a project team. That's how uh, Scrum works. Scrum flow in a base, Scrum workflow is based on a um, sprint, a, repeated, a repeatable fixed time boss uh, duration, which a definition of done 
uh, is created. The definition of dawn is a process where um, at the end of the, the, the sprint event or a time burst duration for developing a piece of software, then you develop um, a software. It's called dawn, definition of dawn. So once a, pro, a, 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 pro, a sprint reaches definition of done, it means that yes, the product has uh, uh, reached um, reached the acceptance acceptable acceptance criteria of that particular um, software, and it can be deployed. It means that the product of the highest possible value has been created. So that is how sprint is, is done. Sprint is, is time burst within a period of one month. It can be more than one month to develop a piece of software in sprint. Once it's more than one month, it's no longer a scrum you are doing. Then you are doing another thing. That will help the developers and the scrum team to work around the clock, making sure that Within one month, they are coming up with a result. Within one month, they are coming up with a result. So if, if, the, if, the, if the organization say, you scrum, uh, scrum to do this, you know that at the end of the month, you are coming to, to, to show the organization what you have done. If a completed piece of software, it must be ready. And if it's not ready, then you, will, you know that what you are doing is not screw. You must have developed something. Something must have been done at the end of one month. And that is screw. You can't, at the end of the one month, you come to the, the stakeholder and tell them that uh, no people couldn't develop anything. Else. No, that means you are not using screw. So that is how. Scrum is right. Scrum makes it effective that you will be developing small, small features. You know, at the end of the 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 month, you keep on developing small. So if, if the project is meant to be six months, by by the end of uh, that six months, you must have developed up to six features or seven features or or but at least one. You can develop up to three features within one month, if you can. But at worst, you must develop at least one feature. That is how Sprint works. So, and to do that, to make sure that this Sprint um, works very well, you must have to follow some events within that uh, Sprint. One of the events is a um, daily scrum. Another event is a scrum re uh, review. Another event is a sprint retrospective. What is a uh, daily uh, scrum or daily stand up? You can call it daily stand up or daily scrum. Daily scrum is a meeting that is held every day in a scrum environment when you are managing a, pro a project using scrum. It's a must that every day you must have a meeting with your team where everybody will come to itemize what they've been doing, like what they did last yesterday, what they are planning to do today, and the challenges they are having. So by the time every member of the team comes to table what they've done and their challenges and what they are planning to do, it becomes very clear what is going on. Nobody will be saying, ah, what are we doing to the... You can't just say you are confused within the project environment. How can you be confused within project environment while everybody is coming every day to table what they are doing and... Um, uh, what they've done and their challenges. How can you be confused? 
How can you say you don't know, uh, you have a problem, you, you'll be trying to solve this problem for three days now, and that's why you, you could do your, yeah. how can you say you are you, you're trying to solve, while you are supposed to be telling the team your challenges on daily basis? So looking at all this, you see how effective uh, Scrum is, because it helps you to, to collaborate every day. That's why the, uh, one of the principles means uh, constant collaboration. Talk about your, your, what you are doing with your, keep discussing. Whatever your challenge is, keep collaborating. And then you keep on collaborating and developing and collaborating till you finish developing that piece of um, software you are working on. Then you move to Scrum demo. You call it Scrum demo or Scrum, uh, Scrum review, whichever one you call it, the two is accepted in Scrum. Scrum review is when after one month, you people have come up developing a piece of software. Then you invite the stakeholders and then show the stakeholders what you've done. And uh, if it's um, a, a piece of uh, a feature in a, in a software that you guys, then you show the stakeholders how the feature is working. Somebody outside the team will actually come and use the feature to see how it's working. And uh, once everybody's seen that it's working, then that feature can then be deployed to the main product. And after this Scrum review, where you have um, actually demonstrated what you've done and then deploy the feature, the next thing is to go back and then pick another feature through a sprint and start developing another feature. But before you pick another feature to develop, the Scrum must observe what we call sprint retrospective, where the whole team members will gather to look at their in-house, kind of um, looking at what you have been going on within one month we have been working together, how can we improve uh, as a team? Where do we need to improve? After the meeting, you, are, you, are, you tidy your house off. And then you go back and they start another sprint. So it becomes a cycle. Once you finish, you, you demo and they do re retrospective, then you go back again. Once you finish, you do it. That's how you keep on, if you have like, five features to deploy, that's how you keep on cycling it till you finish that five features. If it's going to take five months to finish that feature, you keep on, becomes a cycle. That is called a Scrum cycle till you finish. That's how you manage, that's how you use Scrum. And uh, it's been a very powerful approach in developing, a, um, in deploying projects or managing projects. Uh, it used to be um, in software industry, but so many other industries, uh, they are now using, uh, it's becoming globally accepted and uh, uh, industry-wide accepted uh, project management uh, methodology. It's no longer an issue of um, software, but it started from software industry. Now we're going to look at um, rules in Agile Scrum. All these people you can see in this uh, diagram are actually the people needed for you to perform an effective uh, Scrum. Starting from the business owner, which is the main stakeholder that uh, brings the objective, the, the what needs to be done. 
so down to the product owner. So the product owner collaborates with the business owner to gather requirements of the project or the product. Product owner can actually be a business analyst. So he gathers requirements from the business owner and then document the requirement in form of uh, product backlog. Then during the process, you need to collaborate with the end users of that product to make their input. <coughs> These are stakeholders as well. You equally need to collaborate with the domain experts popularly known as subject, uh, subject matter experts for them to make their input during the requirement gathering. So you, get, you, you, you receive the problem statements from the business owner and the objective, then you got a requirement from the end users and domain experts to understand the requirements of the products you are planning, to, to develop and then you document it. And then you come down to the Scrum team. The Scrum team is made up of the Scrum master and the developers. Scrum master here serves as the project manager because in Scrum, we don't have project manager. We don't call it project manager, we call it Scrum master. And then the scrum master, when you bring the, the, the when the, the, the product owner, which is equally supposed to be business analyst, brings the, the backlog, then he collaborates with the scrum master and the, uh, the, 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 the development team, which is the developers, to develop the product. So the product, the scrum master makes sure that there is no uh, hitches. There is no blockers. He solves all the problem within the project, uh, the Scrum team, to make sure that everybody is doing their job very well on, on, on time and on budget, Receive, removing any kind of impediment within the team. So he's here to solve the problem. That's the main purpose of um, Scrum Master. And if there is anyone within this uh, developers that don't understand the way a Scrum works. It's the Scrum master that we um, educate them on how the Scrum works. Then developers here are made up of the developer, the uh, quality analyst or the tester, the architect, and the business analyst. These are the people that made up made up of the develop, development team. Before they use it, um, Scrum Guide used to call it development team, but it's now called developers. So it's no longer development team. So this group is called developers. So that is how the Scrum works. So within this, in a diagram is the Scrum team. And you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can be more than 10 in this uh, team, in this Scrum team. Once they are more than 10, it means what you are practicing is no longer Scrum. But they can interact with the um, stakeholders outside this team. Stakeholders are not part of Scrum team. So that is how Scrum works. So any, any questions so far before we continue moving down? Okay. 
Now this is um, the Agile Scrum process. These are the things I've just um, explained. You have it here in a diagram. So this is um, the product owner. He, 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 he allows this with the stakeholders to gather requirement. And this is the requirement here, product backlog. And after gathering the requirements, now he allows this with the developers. That is the development team to refine the requirement and then plan for operation. When they are planning for operation, that's what they are planning for sprint. We call it sprint planning. When they are planning to actually start developing or ex executing the, the project, we call it sprint planning. And after that, then they, they, they will pick some features from this uh, whole product backlog. And then once they pick some of these features, those features or those uh, um, user story they pick because they cannot pick all the, the, the product backlog. But if they can work on all the product backlog at the same time, it's up to them. But whichever product backlog um, they picked up, which is the requirement, becomes sprint backlog. It's no longer product backlog. It's now sprint backlog. Because this is now, sprint is a, a period of a time, a period of one month, they are developing a feature. So this sprint backlog is what they are now going to work on. Maybe the sprint backlog, if they are developing an e-commerce website, if they are trying to develop um, a piece of a feature in an e-commerce website, maybe they are trying to add a, uh, a payment gateway or a, sh a shopping cart within that. Let me say payment gateway. Maybe they are trying to develop or integrate uh, a PayPal payment gateway or pay, pay stack payment gateway or Flutter wave payment gateway in an e-commerce website. Now the, 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 the sprint backlog they are, they are working on is now going to be the requirement that will help them to develop that payment gateway. Now they've selected this backlog, the, the sprint backlog, they will work on this sprint backlog for one month and then develop it and it becomes uh, a feature which can be used within that software. So within this cycle is when they do the daily scrum and then collaborate among themselves, which is the scrum master, the developers, and they work as a team within that one month. And after them, they will come up with what they've developed to the uh, stakeholders where they will do their sprint review. And after sprint review, where they have uh, showcased what they've done to the stakeholders, then they will release the increment. The increment is that uh, piece of uh, functionalities like payment gateway is now working. So that if you are now a shopper, if you are shopping in the e-commerce website, you can actually start paying using uh, PayPal or using a uh, Flutter Wave or Paystack to make payments. And once they finish doing that and deploy that, then they will come as a team where they do their sprint retrospective. You see them here, they, they gather as a team to look at, to look in-house where they'll be having problem and the uh, possible area of improvement. And after the meeting, they will come back again to the product backlog.
to pick another product. Maybe this time around, what they are going to be picking uh, might be another functionality like um, customer uh, support uh, uh, features in the website where or customers review so that when a customer um, want to buy a, a product, the, the customer can actually see the reviews of the product before buying. So they can then start working on. Once they pick that, they will do that, follow all this process, they will deploy, they will come back again and pick another feature. That's how they continue to develop and deploy, develop and deploy till they finish all the product backlog within this uh, backlog. And then that will be the end of the, the whole project. So that's how the Agile Scrum uh, process works. So, any questions so far? Okay. We keep moving. So, now we'll look at a Sprint Roadmap. Okay, Donald, you are raising your hand. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Um, with what you just um, described concerning the agile uh, scrum rules and um, the fact that they still go back to the um, still go back to the sorry the. Can you put up the slide after the this? process? Uh, going back to the product backlog to go and pick um, another round of um, a process to actually work on and improve on. Yes. It seems there's, I don't really see any um, kind of a break in between whatever thing they have actually done. For instance, uh, my thinking is that after they have actually um, gone to the end, of a particular project and that project has actually gone out in the market that there will be a sort of break before they start working on another one but i see a situation where they are always at it i don't yeah, know yeah the, the only time they have break is when they're having a, a sprint retrospective when they are like now after the sprint review and uh, everybody is happy. The the stakeholders are happy because they were developed and uh, there's an increment which is now deployed. They don't just go back to pick another uh, set of uh, um, user stories. What they do is that they go. They have a meeting called retrospective. This is where they have a meeting. Within this meeting, they are not producing anything. They are not taking, they are not doing anything with the, the production or, or the, the backlog. It's an in-house where they, they have to actually spend time to say thank you. Um, the, the product owner, we appreciate them. Thank you for all you guys have done. I'm very proud of you. Um, do we, do, what are the challenges we are having or what this and this? Look at in house. Within this time is a bit of realization and appreciation and motivation from both the product owner and the scrum master appreciating the team. And from there, even if uh, like some team members are having issues or misunderstanding, this is the time to make sure that they uh, resolve any understanding and make sure that everybody is happy, and then they come back to start again. So you can see sprint retrospective here. That's where that's the only break they have. And after the sprint retrospective, they go back to start work. That's how Scrum work. There is no like break, like um, after you must have deployed this. They are working in a project. 
You can't say that um, on Monday, today we are not going to work on Monday, we're having a break because we, no. You go to work every day because you get paid every day. But within the team, after that, you, uh, you, you have time to relax with him, but you are still working, but not actually working with the, with the uh, product backlog. But you guys are collaborating to look at um, your strategies and um, what are whatever impediments within the house, uh, maybe uh, the product, maybe the a, a, a team, two team members are be having issues, or this is time to, to resolve issues. This is time, uh, my so, so, so maybe the um, if you are. A laptop is not working well. It's time to raise the issue. I need to change this laptop. Or oh, this is, you know, you resolve whatever is the problem. Uh, your antivirus is no longer working. This is time. Everybody collaborate to put your house in order before you go back to work again. Um, start developing. So any any more questions? So let's look at the uh, sprint roadmap. So the roadmap is actually uh, a lay down plan uh, to get the best out of a sprint. And the first thing is the sprint must have a goal of the product, that is a vision. What do you plan to achieve within this sprint? You must have a goal. And the uh, feature of the product, the, the, it must have a, a feature that is going to be developed at the end of, it must be a tangible feature that must be developed at the end of that uh, sprint. The timetable for the uh, there must be it, it must be a time base. Actually, um, the time for for the sprint um, it cannot exceed one month, and it cannot be less than um, two weeks. So it can be between two weeks and. Uh, so two weeks between two weeks and the four weeks, that is one month. That must be the, the time duration for you to do this uh, and deliver a piece of uh, software. Uh, plan iteration of the product. There must be a sprint planning where the team comes to look at with, with the, the, the product owner, coming, the developers coming to look at the product backlog, uh, looking at how it prioritize, which one are we choosing, which one is more important to deliver now so that the organization will be at the highest um, profitability. So that's why you plan to pick the, the user stories to work on. Then daily meeting is uh, on progress. There must be a daily meeting, just like I said earlier. If you are not, I, I've been in a situation, I've worked in a team, you know, I wasn't the, 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 the project manager, I was just a business analyst. I know we are not doing the right thing, but I don't have the power to change what we are doing because we are not, we, are, we, we said we are using, um, we are using the um, screw. That's what the, 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 the company's policy stated that we should use Scrum. And we said we are using Scrum, but the actual fact is that we are not using Scrum because we are not having daily standup. Because our team, we feel the, is, um, we can't be having meeting every day. Actually, that uh, we should, they said we should have a meeting um, two times in a week. Daily standup, we have having a daily standup two times in a week. But in actual sense, what we are doing is not Scrum. 
which I raised the issue, but what can I do? So we continue doing that way, but that wasn't Scrum we were doing in that. So if you're actually doing Scrum, you must have a meeting every day. That is the first thing you do. That is what the Scrum do in order to get the best out of Scrum. So um, review of uh, created products. You must review at the end of every sprint, you must come with the develop the, the come to the stakeholders to review what you've done. You can't just you cannot go back to start another sprint without reviewing what you've done. It is a must if you say you are doing um, scrum. At times you might review and the stakeholder might say that they are not happy. Maybe you'll go back in another sprint to, 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 to do that, to, um, to review to, or to add more this or solve whatever problem. But the truth is that you must review, you must come up with a, a software that is working. And after that, then you have a feedback and lesson learned. Feedback and lesson learned is a sprint retrospective where you come back, everybody make a feedback. This is what um, the problem we're having. We learn our lesson, we document our lesson. Next time, this is the best way we have to be doing things. I have so, so problem I want to solve before we start. So this is the time you have an in-house uh, meeting to look at um, uh, your feedbacks and then learn your lesson and then continue. So that is um, the, the roadmap. So any question on the sprint roadmap? Then we are going to then look at the Agile Scrum cheat sheet. Cheat sheet means uh, it's a collective of everything about Scrum. We just put it in one document, you know. So it's all about this, everything you can think about Scrum. Hello, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, I raised my hand. Sorry to take us back a little. Okay. Yeah, on the sprint roadmap. Okay. Um, you are sharing an experience with us on the fact that um, you are the business analyst and at a point in time, you discover that um, um, the team could not actually have a daily uh, uh, review session. Mm. Now, uh, I, I, I believe it's a purely practical um, issue or an experience. Um, I don't know if you'd like to can share with us what was actually the reason for not being able to meet up with this daily um, review because even from my own side with the kind of work I do, um, you discover that um, there are meetings that we hold almost every two days or every other day. And it really gets to a particular point where you feel a bit choked and you are just struggling to catch up or meet up with the demands of the daily meeting. So in this particular instance you shared, what, what was that challenge? That yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the issue there is that um, uh, they feel that um, the team feel that actually there is no, no need for this meeting uh, because we're always working together as a team so where's the need of just coming for us to talk, blah, 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 this is what I've done, this is what I, um, my, my problems, and while I can actually, I'm working daily, and when, when, once I have a problem, I can flag off a red, uh, a red flag, and, the, and the, the Scrum Master will automatically see my red flag and uh, come and sort my issue out. So this, I've always been flagging off all my red flags 
to the scrum, creating tickets. Once you have a problem, you create a ticket. That is a red flag. Once you flag off, these are some of the, the functionality in JIRA. If you are working in a JIRA environment with your team, if you have a problem, you flag off. You are this team. When you're having an issue, create a ticket, and the scrum matter will automatically work on that and sort you out. So what is the need of just coming again to have a date where I, on, on constant, we want to have a problem in flag. So they feel that this is just a waste of time. We don't even need this because we're always collaborating. But that is not what the scrum, the scrum says. The scrum says you must collaborate, you must have a meeting. You know, that is the, what the scrum principle says. So you mean that like, is too, we can't be doing that all the time. After all, we don't need it. We are not even have. So this is it, not because of kind of choking or whatever, but you know, just um, a team, uh, if you're working with developers or some people, they might not just be taking some of these principles so seriously. But the actual, the main thing is that this is the best practice. This is the best approach, you know? And I'm not going to be the one that we promote once I'm working within an environment, um, a defined environment like Scrum environment or even uh, any kind of, I would like to, to um, abide by all the, uh, rules within that environment, you know, and uh, that is me. So once the, uh, you say that we should do it this way, I prefer we do it this way to get the highest benefit, because some people have done extensive research on this methodology before they come in up and is widely adopted. But a, a, a team of workers or developers or team of project team will say that they are doing this, whereas they are not actually doing what they say they are doing. So that is um, actually what happened. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. So looking at um, the Agile Scrum cheat sheet, we have um, four Agile values, which is um, individuals and uh, interactions. We've talked about that, individuals and interaction over process, processes and tool. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Responding to change over following a plan. So that is uh, the core agile value. That is the core agile value. So, if you want to get the best of Agile, you follow these four principles. That is what is Agile is planning to uh, help us achieve. Then you have 12 Agile principles. And that is, uh, number one is to satisfy the customer. That is the number one. So Agile uh, resolves around customer's need. You know, so we must, with Agile, we must understand uh, the customer's journey. What is customer? What are they doing with our product? What are they saying with our product? How do they feel with our product? What are their challenges while uh, dealing with our products? These are what we, uh, we, we tend to understand using Agile. So that is, in order to satisfy a customer. These are the, the things we need to understand. And this has been one of the major uh, approach so many companies have been using to survive and increase profitability. 
looking at um, uh, people like uh, Amazon. Amazon, they are in such a way that most of the things that people tend to love Amazon is because of the extensive review, customers review about their products. Anybody who wants to, the first thing you, you read at reviews. When you look at review, because you don't know the people, people's review tend to, with that review, Agile, um, uh, Amazon tend to understand all the, the, the challenges their customers have been facing. And gathering all those data about their customers' review help them to, to improve on their processes, improve on their products, improve on everything they do. And that's how agile work. You, you must have a means of constantly capturing customers' review, customers' opinion about your product. That is what is agile. That's the way to satisfy customers. And once you are getting all this, um, all this um, customer's opinion, you will use it to improve on your product. And you find out that customers will, uh, customers will always be happy because once they, they, they complain about something, the next thing they say that the product, the whatever they have been complaining has been improved, constant improvement. And that's what, what we're looking at, Agile and Six Sigma constant improvement on processes, on services, on products. So then Agile look at um, welcoming, welcome change requirement. If there is a need for change, unlike in a waterfall, Agile want to welcome that change because we are in a changing environment. Well, our, our, our market is so dynamic. Our market, well, well, software market is fast environment. It keeps changing and we cannot uh, be able to, we shouldn't be in a, a very rigid environment while we are, we are living in a fast changing environment. So Agile uh, helps to solve this problem. And working together, daily throughout the project. We must, we must work together daily, having meetings. So this will help to, to build the trust and the understanding and help the team to bond. And when a team is bonded, you find it difficult that the team will have a problem because they bonded over time. They have meetings, they collaborate, they share their experience, they share their problems together and that is all about bonding. And it, it goes a long way in helping to, to move project faster and help to uh, project to be, to be delivered uh, within the uh, desired requirements and the specification. Here, another one is um, uh, support and trust. Build a project around motivational individual. Give them the environment and support and support they need and trust them to get job done. So Agile tend to, to, to give the, the team all the support they, they, they need and then allow them to do their job. So that's why it's called the uh, a cross-functional team, self-sustaining. Once agile teams start doing something, once they start their work, developer um, stakeholders don't have direct contact with them. You must go through a scrum master or through, you can't even go through a scrum master. You must go through product owner. So this is um, a kind of a barricade. Give them all the support they want and leave them alone to do their job. So you, you, the issue of that is stakeholders will be coming around, directing, giving unnecessary order for everybody to know that uh, is the 
he's the CEO or he's the director in this. You don't even see a developers. That is how agile works. If you want to, if you want anything to be uh, to be done, go through the product owner. Or if you want anything done, yeah, it's only through the product owner. The product owner is the gateway to the developer, and that's how you shield your developer from uh, distraction, because the actual development work is not easy. When you are coding, you don't need distraction. So this is what Agile, the Agile try to, 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 to shield developers from this uh, stakeholders um, uh, distractions. Um, the most effective and efficient method of conveying information is, is to, and within development with a face-to-face uh, conversation. So just the face-to-face -face means that constant collaboration within the team. So we've seen so much about um, uh, constant collaboration one-on-one -on -one within the team. And working solution means a working software. They prefer working software to extensive uh, development, extensive documentation. If you, no matter how your document, how beautiful your documentation is, and the software is not working, that software is, um, is rubbish. The documentation is rubbish. We want the software to work, to actually deliver. You know, so I've, I've seen so many beautiful documentation. I'm telling you, I've seen so many software. You see the documentation, but at the, actually when you start using the software, testing the software, you find out they are not doing what they documented. It's not working. You find out there is bug all over the software. But if you see documentation, you say, ah, this is a powerful software. I've used so many white label software. And within the, the, the documentation, you see beautiful documentation. And you'll be tempted, you just rush and buy the white label. But at the end of the day, you see that the software is full of balls, rubbish. So Agile is preaching that the main important thing is for the software to work. Although it should be documented because people should be able to know um how to use the software but the main thing is that it's working not the doc because a lot of people will keep dwelling on documentation beautiful documentation process mapping and the rest but at the end of the day the software is not working so the rest is continuous attention to technical excellence and the good design and hence agility technical excellence means uh, uh just uh working software and uh, requirements, uh, good requirements, uh, prioritization, and the rest of them. Then simplicity, yes, there should be a, a, a simple require, requirement. Requirement uh, documentation must be simple. It must be very simple. The, the 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 user stories must be very simple to understand. It shouldn't be so um, ambiguous. So, uh, this uh, talking about transparency. The team model should be transparency, and uh, the requirements should be simple. And the team must be self-organizing. Self-organizing means that what, even the team have a problem, it should be left for the team to resolve their problems. The team, the, the agile, agile scrum feel that the team is matured enough to resolve their issue. So when the team is even having a problem, what the scrum master should do is to help create an avenue where the team should resolve their problem. If two, if two uh, team members are having issues, what the scrum master should do is to help them to resolve their issue, not scrum master resolving the issue. 
they should be given opportunity to go and resolve their differences. If at the end of the day, they couldn't resolve their difference, then the school master should come to look into the, the matter. So these are a, a way of trying to entrust responsibility, making them feel matured. So these are ways of um, uh, promoting uh, their uh, maturity within the team. It's the team must be self-organizing, you know? So, and it should be shared from, uh, uh, from distractions from the high stakeholders. So on a regular interval, the team reflects on how they become more effective and then to, and this was called a sprint retrospective. Over time, they should be, um, have a meeting to look in house on how to readjust, improve on what they are doing. So this is the uh, 12 agile principles. That's um, an agile team should be working on. So as a project manager, you must understand this. No, we are not, when we are working with agile scrum, we are not going to be answering a project manager. You'll be answering the scrum master, but you need to understand all these things very well. So these are the four scrum rules. All these things we have just done it. We've said a uh, lot about it, but I just want you to understand this um, fact sheet very well, so that even if you, you can the only thing you can just uh, grasp and uh, you can help you to understand how agile scrum work very well. So the scrum we have uh, the scrum team. Uh, is a uh, 10 or few people, including one uh, product owner, one scrum master and developers. Product owner is a single decision maker who is responsible for prioritizing the backlog and ma maximizing the value delivered by the scrum team. Developers are the cross-functional team of three to nine people who plan adapt and uh, hold each other accountable to deliver a usable increment uh, in each sprint. Uh, Scrum master, a true leader who serves coaches and support the Scrum team, the product owner and organization to adopt Scrum as defined in the Scrum guide. That is uh, the rules. And looking at uh, the sprint, so here we have a sprint is scheduled to be uh, same length. So if the sprint is meant to be within uh, 12 to four weeks, as soon as the sprint ends, the next sprint begins. So Donna, um like uh, what we are saying about um the sprint not um having a, um the team not having a break after the the they finish the deploying the the increments like i said yeah like i said the only time they have is when they having their sprint retrospective and is not considered as a break. So this the next uh, sprint begins immediately after um, as soon as uh, the, 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 the sprint, the ongoing sprint ends. So that is it. So there is uh, no break. Because even the, the sprint retrospective is counted as sprint because it's a meeting, it's still a job you guys are doing. So there is no break. The sprint is a container for all the scrum events. Yeah. <clears throat> then sprint planning. 
understand why the sprint is um, valuable. What pro what prioritized item the team will be worked on and how the team will complete the work. So that is um, the sprint planning. That is the purpose. You need to have a purpose. You need to have aim. You need to have objective, a goal. Any sprint that doesn't have a goal is not a sprint because you don't know what you are doing. You must have a goal. You must know what um, we are going to be achieving. You must have a definition of done from the beginning. Definition of done, you know that once you reach a definition of done, you know that this is, uh, we are, we've completed the sprint. You must know it's kind of um, a milestone. You must be able to understand when you, you, you reach a uh, definition of done. And that's creating a purpose, creating um, a goal from the beginning. And that can only be done through sprint planning. The Scrum team is responsible for planning each backlog item and taking on a realistic amount of work based on their capacity and performance. So over time, the sprint team must have known their capacity and then work within their capacity. And to do that, once they work like two, they've done two sprints, they should be able to work out their capacity using, a, we call it a sprint velocity. Velocity is a, uh, a situation where you get the average capacity of the, the developers using um, the other sprints they've done as a benchmark to measure. The Scrum team plans the work together with the goals of uh, completing the work together. The sprint goal the sprint goals, selected backlog item, and plan for the delivery uh, uh, for delivering them is called a sprint backlog. That's um, for sprint planning. Then, when we come to daily scrum, the purpose is to inspect progress towards the sprint goal and coordinate efforts and adapt plan. That is the goal of a daily scrum. One, daily scrum is for developers to improve communication and decision making. Two, from format, from the format can vary, but the focus is on hitting the sprint goal. Three, the meeting should last um, within 15 minutes and not more than 15 minutes. That is a uh, uh, daily scrum. Then sprint review. The purpose is to demonstrate progress, inspire the team result, and get feedback for future adaptation. Number one is to the scrum team should show actual working results from the user's uh, perspective. Then get organized and then expect feedback. This is um, what you do in sprint review. And then sprint retrospective. The purpose of this sprint retrospective is to allow the scrum team to pause, reflect, and plan ways to improve team quality and effectiveness. Yeah, that is... Um, a uh, sprint retrospective. I've said so much about the sprint uh, retrospective. Yeah, they use a, a root cause analysis to solve problems. Uh, no blaming or complaining. They just work as a team to solve their problem. So that is um, a sprint retrospective. And uh, that is. Um, Agile cheat sheet. So this contains everything you really need to know. This particular one document contains all everything you need to know about 
agile uh, scrum sheet. So if you are struggling, you can just come here and actually learn this very well. You capture everything in this, um, in a just a snapshot. So now here is a agile project management at first. So this is um, the product vision statement, a product roadmap, product backlog, release plan, uh, sprint backlog, and uh, increment. This is what the at first. That's what made up of uh, agile project management. And this is what is bringing us to the end of agile methodology. So if you have any question, you can ask. Any questions? Okay. So anyway, I was hoping that um, I'm going to finish this um, this uh, project management today. But as we can see, our two hours have elapsed, and we still have uh, more to do. So what I will do is that. We we'll have to do that um, uh, tomorrow. But if you people are still strong, we can fire up. But I like, I don't like my this thing to be too lengthy so that it can easily be assimilated. So what do you say? Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still have, uh, I have um, um, three topics, but they are very short topics like conflict management, project management tools, and uh, project management soft skills. They are very short. Um, but I think we need to do it tomorrow so that we can, uh, I don't want to rush it. I don't want to rush it so that um, we'll be able to have good understanding about it. So do you have any, any question or any input? Okay. Um, I'm thinking we can we can we can continue tomorrow. Okay. Uh, tomorrow it won't be more than one hour. I think I don't think um, we can't even exceed one hour. But I will I like I wouldn't want the situation the ending ending part will be rushed. I don't like it. So I want us to take time and. Um, conclude uh, this um, very well. So, yeah. I think we've achieved enough today. This um, agile methodology, okay. oh, this uh, done uh, that's enough for today. Mm -hmm. So uh, I will leave you people to rest and digest what we've done. And, uh, like um, Donald, you see, you are having um, issues with um, downloading a uh, project labor. Yes, sir. So 
you said you speaking uh, you spoken to to someone about um, your soft um, your PC your laptop yeah I'm actually using an official um, laptop so oh, oh. I guess Okay, that is why I didn't. If you because you are you using the um, official maybe company, uh, you, you can't add the uh, most companies you cannot download the external software. So the, if you want a software, in so many cases, it's the company that will install the software for you. Yeah, yeah, that is how they are programmed. Yeah, so. Yeah, that is yeah, that is where I'm having a, pro, a, pro, a problem. So if you need to do that, if you need to, I suggest you use your pers your private um, laptop to download that. You're not gonna have a problem. It's very easy. But if it's company software, you won't be able to. They they, they install special. Um, anti software or anti viral that to not allow you to install anything in their system. Yeah, because they don't they don't want anybody to tamper where you can, you know, you can start is uh, install something that start uh, stealing their their data. Yes, well, it's yeah. closing their. Uh, that is how even hackers. Hack, hack has come. You can come in and uh, hack some company um, school system. So, <clears throat> so it means you are not having any issue. That's not an issue. So. Uh, and yes. Um. Good evening, sir. This is uh, Yeah, good evening. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Okay. Sir, I have issue with the with the assignment. Okay. I I tried to solve it. I tried to yeah. download. I tried. Which one? Which one? Because we have to. On I I use the for the Microsoft. Um... Is it project labor or breakdown structure? Yeah. Yes, sir. The, 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 no, the, 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 the project labor. The Lucid chart. Okay. I tried using it and I tried using the Microsoft Visio and even the, the project um, Libra, but I realized that I don't understand what I'm supposed to do because okay. I spent more than um, five hours. Um, <laughs> On the um, Thursday night, okay. I went to sleep around 4 a.m., but I didn't achieve anything. Okay. So even um, yesterday, I spent like three hours, <laughs> and I called um, Lovett to try and explain it. But okay. I realized she said she's trying to do it, so she couldn't do it as well. So uh, okay, okay, the. On um, let me start from uh, Lucid Chat. In Lucid Chat, you need to sign me. You need to sign up or register. But it's, it's, it's free. You need to sign up there to start using Lucid Chat. And um, Microsoft Visio is a paid software so you can't uh, it's either you buy it you can't use it or you buy it some people used to some people some people use a used to hack it but i'm not uh, of that uh, opinion because there are we have so many free software that can give you the um the services you desire from the microsoft there's no need of trying to get a hacked one so yeah, I'm looking at you using uh, Lucid Chat or Draw.io. So, but as you're having a, um, um, an issue, what well, I'll do that maybe tomorrow, if you can uh, finish this thing we are doing, then we'll have a quick session on that. 
because they are not so difficult, you know. So look at how to, um, how you can just get started with it. And then, yeah, it's not difficult. Both um, draw.io and even um, Project Labor, it's not difficult. It's just that uh, Donald is having a uh, problem because of uh, he's using a company uh, laptop. Outside that, it's not difficult to download and install and start using. So, but it's good you guys have registered your, your challenges and uh, are going to have session on that. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow evening. I'll post the link. Think, um, think we'll make it eight o'clock as well. Okay. Eight o'clock, or uh, if it's going to be earlier, seven o'clock. I'll let you guys know, but we think it so that we can achieve. Maybe I'll make it several so that we can um, actually um, finish what we have for the day and have time to look at um, uh, Lucid Chart, Draw.io. I think these are both areas. I think you guys are having issues. I don't think I uh, don't think you guys are having issues with the uh, project labor. I'll make our time to look briefly at all the softwares. Yeah. A uh, good night, everyone. Good night, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good